Hey guys, this is Code of Princess for the 3DS. I know it's a bit rare for me to be doing a 3DS game, but I'd like to do a few more here if I can. Uh, this actually is not coming out in Japan until tomorrow. However, I was able to get a hold of an early copy. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, this is a side-scrolling action game, kind of in the vein of older games like Final Fight, Dungeons & Dragons, Collection, uh, yeah, as well as other games in that similar vein. Uh, this game has actually been worked on by a couple of people who worked on the original Guardian Heroes, which is one of my more favorite games of all time. So let's get right into it. Uh, this is Code of Princess. From the outset here, you can select between Scenario, Free Play, sorry, I'm in the second menu, Story Mode, uh, Local Connection, Internet Connection, and Options. Uh, so you can play uh, with and against other people online. Haven't done that yet. Uh, you can also obviously collect, uh, connect locally, or you have Story Mode. In story mode you have four options, you have scenario, free play, additional quests, and the tutorial. Tutorial is pretty simple, it uh, gets you right into it. The additional quests, uh, they're not like download quests or anything like that, they're actually just quests that you unlock as you play through. So if we head in here you'll see I have quite a few of those already, and I've cleared a bunch of them. You can see the ones that I have cleared, I have times at the top there. Uh, you have free play. These are actually all of the missions that you go through in the game. These are the actual story mode missions, so they're not additional missions. Uh, but you go through them and you can do them again to get more gold, which you'll see up here. You can spend in a shop. You get experience points for your characters. Uh, and in these quests, you can actually play as additional characters that you unlock. So, for example, uh, these top four here, Soranju, Ari, Zozoko, and Areguro, these are the main four characters in the game. You'll see from the level that I've only used Saranji so far. Uh, and then these additional characters can be used for these quests. You see you can level them up. I've messed with him a little bit. There's one character I haven't unlocked yet. Those come along in the story of the game. So anyway, obviously the meat of the game is the scenario. One thing I find a little bit strange about this game is I expected it to be the typical left-to-right brawler, you know, get to the end of the level, fight the boss, but it's actually not. Uh, you actually you pick your character. You have full range over equipment. So you have five equipment slots, which is awesome. And once you're ready to go, you go here. You can also shop. Uh, and these are the, the missions here. So obviously I go to the very bottom one. Uh, this is the one I haven't cleared yet. Um, but yeah, it is, it is a little bit strange in that. You'll see these are my clear times over here. These are actually missions. So you actually basically get in there, you see a little bit of story, you do a fight, and then you continue like that. You're not actually going level to level to level killing a bunch of you know lower henchmen and then fighting bosses uh, each mission is a mission so for example I'll go into one of these earlier ones and show that off to you you'll see a lot of my times are lower because a lot of the missions don't take very long to clear uh, some of them are a little bit higher kind of up in the six minute territory but uh, you'll see this is a difficulty here and it kinda talks about the mission here I'll jump into one of the earlier ones and kinda show off a little bit how the game works So this is a story, it's fully voiced, which is cool. Uh, the story is completely over the top, which is usually ridiculous, but in this game, uh, it, it, it's not afraid to make fun of itself, which is a really good thing. Uh, the main character, the princess, walks around in the most ridiculous outfit ever. Uh, it's skimpier than a bikini. Uh, and in a typical anime or game like that, nobody would even make note of that. But in this game, uh, you actually do have a lot of characters kind of poking fun at the fact that she's basically wearing almost nothing. So this is still story. You'll see it animates quite well. It's basically how the game looks. Might have picked one with a bit of a longer cutscene at the beginning here, but no worries. So the characters spend a lot of time poking fun at each other, uh, making ridiculous gestures, stuff like that. So here we go. This is the character I choose in the, chose in the middle here, Soranju. She is the princess. She has a really annoying voice. Another thing that's kind of I didn't really like uh, so far about the game is you'll see these are my party members here. 
Uh, but when you get into actual fights, none of them are actually there. It's, it's all you. Which I guess it might have just been too easy uh, if, if they have all the other characters out there. Uh, because the game is more mission based, so it's trying to actually clear the missions. So here we go. Finally get into it here. So you have three planes here, very similar to Guardian Heroes. If you hold block, you can move between them. You can do a front step, a back step. You have light attacks, strong attacks. And then you have attacks to shoot enemies up in the air, and kind of stuff like that. So one of the things about this game that kind of sets it apart is that you have targeting an enemy, which if you hit him with that attack, it targets them. Uh, the targeted enemy actually takes more damage. I also have a burst function, so if I do that, uh, not only does it stun the enemies, but it actually allows me to do more damage to them than normal. So for bosses and things like that, first you want to make sure you target them. Can't even get close to him here. Target. And then when you attack them, you actually want to go into burst mode. Uh, and you'll actually do like crazy amounts of damage. These guys are obviously quite weak, and I'm quite high level coming back here, but... There actually are quite a, quite a few different attacks, uh, depending on which way you press and which button you press. Uh, you can pull up a command list on the bottom screen at any time, which is cool. So you do want to turn that burst on and off as you need it. You'll see your meters up here, that's your MP meter. Uh, on bosses it's very important to conserve that enough. Uh, when you're actually fighting the boss character himself. So obviously a very simple quest there. I'll show you one of the harder ones now. So again, you're rewarded with experience, gold, any items that you picked up during the quest, and that all comes here. So yeah, so again, I'll go in here, show you a harder one here. So again, you'll see it's not the left to right going through levels, instead it throws you into a mission. Uh, and you're basically tasked with destroying all the enemies. Uh, in some cases, just killing the boss. So these guys, they take a lot more power to kill, actually. So you definitely want to make sure you mark them and use your burst on them as well. It's very important, otherwise it takes forever to kill them. And you can't activate that burst at any time as long as you have the MP to back it up. This guy just seems to want to run away from me. So you see now I'm purple, that's uh, just because I'm poisoned.
a lot of the actual bosses later on uh, use a lot of blocking and things like that. So it's important to try and juggle them as much as you can. So you end up getting surrounded by a lot of enemies, that's when you really want to make the, uh, the, the different planes that you can jump to work for you. You can run away pretty well. Another thing I like about the music or the game so far is the music's nice. Alright, now we got the boss. So these bees, I'll shoot this stunning bullet out. But if you can get the boss locked on and, and burst attack really quickly, you can actually win pretty quickly. Now that I'm out of MP, it's going to make it harder. Ah, not too bad. So there you go, that's a bit of a longer quest there, but again, you'll see the mission-based uh, game, you know, it's not going through levels themselves, it's going through missions themselves. Uh, this is the clothing I was mention mentioning earlier, this is the character's actual clothing. Um, but fortunately, it's so over the top that the other characters do end up making fun of her, poking jokes and, and different things, which actually makes the story somewhat enjoyable instead of just ridiculous anime garbage. So these again are the four main characters that you can go through the story mode with. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet if their stories differ much. I've played as another character for just a touch, uh, and his first mission was actually the exact same. Uh, but they might differ at certain parts because uh, there is a part in the game where your characters do split up a little bit. Uh, but it's not quite as branching as a game like Guardian Heroes, where there's so many different choices that affect your, your paths branching. Uh, and again, when you level up, you get to put your stats into six different things. Vitality is your max HP. PD is your max MP. Attack and defense are obvious. Uh, and then mind deals with how much damage you take from magic. Uh, it might affect your burst damage as well. I'm not 100% sure. And speed is the actual speed of your character. Something I like a lot. So yeah, you can go ahead and allot your points there. And again, there is a shop that you can go to uh, in here to buy new stuff. So... Yeah, that's essentially the game. Uh, there is a lot to do in the game because of the vast amount of characters here, as long as well as the online modes. Uh, so I'll probably come back and do a review of this one a little bit later, but so far I'm liking it quite a bit. There are a few things that I don't like, but overall it has been quite an enjoyable game. Thanks for watching.